Welcome to Studio U. You should be able to see my screen that says Studio U Online Classes and hear my voices. If my voice, only one voice tonight, not two. If you can, if you'll let me know just so we can make sure everyone can see and hear everything. Uh, we are going to go through wonderful weddings tonight, but we are also going to show four other occasions that you can adapt these wedding ensembles and projects for. So even if you know people that are thinking I don't have a wedding coming up, but they just want to maybe learn some new things, this can be a great opportunity to do that. So we're glad you joined us. Um, this is Stacy Croninger. We are going to have Brooke Mayer join us as well. But before we get started with that, I want to show you um, a little bit about what we're going to have for our sale this month. Um, now, you know that right now we have brag bags on sale for 10% off, and these are wonderful gifts. Um, if you're so hoping to get it for Mother's Day, it's a little late for that. You had to order them by April 18th, but you could still order it and just give mom a beautiful picture of what she can expect to receive. Um, but let me show you a couple of uh, templates that we have for brag bags. Uh, this one, Happy Place, is a new one that um, Cassie Bowser created for us. It's simple and has a great uh, spot for three of your family photos, easy to adjust. And then I love this one that's for Grandma, the uh, grandma, best grandma of all time. And it's a fun way to, for Grandma to show off her special grandkids. And the great thing about this is you can add in um, more pictures, or if you don't have that, if she doesn't have that many grandkids, and add in more embellishments. Uh, these little squares let you customize how many you add. So there's some brag bag ideas for you. And again, 10% off until the end of April, which is this Saturday midnight. Your order must be placed. Um, it is on the weekend, so if you're needing help, you'll want to make sure you do that tomorrow uh, because we don't have any support for you on Saturday. Sorry about that. So um, if you have questions, get them answered tomorrow and then finish working on it to make sure you get that order placed by midnight mountain time on Saturday night. Again, I want to make sure everyone can hear me, and so just to make this exciting, uh, we're going to give away our first uh, Heritage Makers 25 points, and they're going to Christy Crest. Christy Crest, we appreciate you showing up tonight and want to reward you for uh, showing with 25 points. And again, if you can see my screen, will you let me know? Just type in and say, hey, I can see you, I can hear you. We'd hate to go any further and find out that you really can't see um, what I'm doing. Oh, yes, thank you so much. Okay, then we're going to move forward and we're going to uh, talk about wonderful weddings. Weddings are such a fun time to um, get family together and celebrate this happy occasion. And so we're going to show you some ensembles that uh, Cassie uh, Balzer has created for us. And when I talk about ensembles, I'm meaning coordinated items. Okay, A lot of times you'll see one invitation or one canvas or something like that. These, This particular ensemble has multiple parts to it, which makes it nice if you're looking for lots of options. So first we have on the left hand side here a beautiful 7 by 5 invitation. That means you have the front and the back to work with. On the front she used a full bleed photo which if you've looked at invitations re recently you'll see that that is really the style and the trend that's going on right now is those full bleeds. But to still get the information on she has that fun little transparent section in the middle with the name and everything. Then on the back it has additional photos and the information about the wedding. Then for a fun party favor, she used these 5x5 five five circle die cut card, which again you have your front and back, so on one side you can say thank you, and on the back it's hugs and kisses from the Mr. and Mrs. Hole punch this and tie it to some fun treat or whatever it is that you're going to give to your um, reception attendees as a party favor. Uh, it makes it nice because it's limited work. They already come die cut for you, so you just have to pop them out, punch the hole, put some ribbon through it, and attach it to whatever your gift is as a thank you. Next up, we have a 12 by 12 lay flat storybook. This book is absolutely beautiful. I love the um, papers and accents and things she used with it. So in the upper left corner here, you'll see um, the cover of this album. And then we have some of the inside pages. And she's used a variety of 
formats. Some there's actually some that have full bleach photos in them. There's some that have like this one, just one photo and have the information. This is actually the first page of the book. There are others that have multiple photos like this one that give little details of the wedding. And I love the fun little quotes that she has throughout this. And then there's one like this cute one that's um, kind of grid-like, but it's a little playful because it has some overlapping photos and leaves space for adding in a few of these uh, beautiful papers that are in this collection with lots of accents and things. Um, as you go through this book, you'll find that there are a variety of designs. Um, some of them are truly grids where you have nine spots, three by three, that you can put things in. And like I said, full bleed. So 12 by 12 lay flat storybook. Then also in this ensemble, she did some fun things that you can have available for your guests as they come into the wedding. This first one is a newlywed advice notepad set. Now this 5x5 five by, five by 8x5 by five notepad set comes with four different notepads. Each one can be customized. They can all be identical or you could have four different designs like she's done here. So for her first notepad, she did advice and well wishes for the Mr. and Mrs. so you can write your information and then sign it. She has this clever one um, that's a little more playful that uh, you can say who you are, how far you've traveled, how you got there, your advice, all sorts of things, and again, sign it. Then she turned them on their side, so it's still bound here at the top of these, but it gives you a little more width to um, write in. So you have words of wisdom for the bride and groom and the secret to a happy marriage. So again, this is a fun way to get information, to have your guests interacting with the bride and groom, leaving them advice. You could also use this at the shower if you're having a wedding shower. Um, and again, this is a set of four notepads are five and a half by eight and a half in size. She also used the playing cards in a creative way um, and you would need to make sure you had some sharpie pins available for these since they are a slick surface. Um, but the first shows the cover of this playing card set which is advice and well wishes for the Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. And then she's kind of divided up the cards and has oh, about five or six different designs and this is two of them. For a fun date night, do this. And so the guests will plan what they suggest for a fun date night, sign their name. Love your spouse even when. So again, um, advice that you can be sharing with uh, the newlyweds and sign your name. So um, this gives you 52 cards that you can have people fill out and then there's a nice little case that you can put them all in at the end of the evening and the bride and groom can go through them um, at their leisure. So fun way to um, get some information from your guests. And then this is the final piece in this ensemble. It's a beautiful um, 11 by 14 print. This is an inexpensive way to display something about the um, a couple and you could even have it on like the gift table or as they um, sign in the guest book. Um, it's just very simple but beautiful and ties in with everything else that's happening for the wedding. Now as I mentioned that's one ensemble but we have some other pieces. Um, Brittany Hutchings created this fun 8x8 eight eight storybook and it's called a story for princess. Um, sorry for a princess, sorry about that. And this is the bride version and I love this because it has this creative text in it. Um, so this is page number one. Once upon a time there was a beautiful girl named, in this case Victoria, she dreamed she was a princess and she would someday meet a handsome prince whom she would marry and they would live happily ever after. The next page has a picture of Victoria. Now in this case, Brittany has done this for um, her ancestors and so they're all ancestor files. But how fun would this be for a newlywed couple to put in pictures of them um, as they grew up and they met and all those different things. So then you go on to Victoria grew up and met and John Banks is who she met. He was her handsome prince. John and Victoria were married and now she's a beautiful queen and they will live happily ever after. And the next page has a picture of them on their wedding day. Now the fun thing about this is there's a groom version coming. So it'll be a story for a prince. And so it's the prince's point of view, not princess, but prince's point.
point of view for this story. So just a little bit different take on telling the bride and groom's fun uh, story about their wedding. It's also a great way, as Brittany has shown here, to capture the story of your ancestors and how your family came to be. So that's kind of a fun um, idea there. Now, there are lots and lots of wedding templates in the gallery, and we want to show you some of the templates that have been in there for a while, and then how you can adapt those to other occasions. Okay, so this first one is Spring Wedding by Anna Gem Gemlich Bates. Uh, this is such a beautiful uh, ensemble. It has great colors, this pink and green. You'll see that there is a... Uh, guest book that they can sign in. This is actually open here on the table. Leave us a note. There's this fun canvas here that has four spots for photos. There's also a book about their, um, tells their story. There are uh, cupcake wraps that you can do out of a 12 by 12 page. There's an invitation for the bridal shower. There's thank you notes and then this fun large address label that you can stick on a takeout box as um, the thank you gift for uh, your guests. Okay, so here's what this ensemble looks like. Now, Brooke went and reimagined this as a baby shower. And the reason why we're showing this is because, like I said at the beginning, you may not have a wedding coming up. You may not be hosting a wedding. But there are other big occasions when it's nice to have ensembles. So here's the um, Brooke's take on a baby shower. She took that canvas that had the wedding pictures and she's changed this. And this is called Sweet Baby Boy. And all these items will show up in the template gallery in the next couple of days. So keep a watch for them, but we don't have the actual numbers yet. Okay, so here we have a canvas. Then we have a 4 by 6 invitation. Um, and I'm just going to go backwards to show you here's that invitation with the pink polka dots and the little and the name and information and here's how easy it was to adapt it change the color of the polka dots change the text and now it's a baby shower instead of a bridal shower next up we have um, a 5 by 7 invitation so this has a front and back you can use both sides if you want to put something on the back or you can just leave it plain and have everything on the front and then remember that cute large address label for a favor well this one's been adjusted for a boy so you could put it on the front of a takeout box or you could use it on the front of a cellophane bag uh, whatever type of um, gift container you want to use, use this large ad label. So very easy to adapt that um, wedding set to a baby shower. Okay, this next one is um, Laurel of Love that was created by Roxanne. And I'm showing you some of the template IDs. This is actually, um, I believe it's a 4x6 um, greeting card that you can, um, that was set up as a thank you card. There are lots of templates. I've just listed a few of them here. Brooke again took this and she used it for a milestone birthday, in this case for a 70 year old. Okay, so she left everything the same, just swapped out some of the colors. So again, I, you've seen this one, it's purple with the brown background. Let me show you what it was originally. It was kind of this soft peach pink look. So you'll see the stripes here. Okay, so here it is done again. I'm sorry, it was a 6 by 4 invitation, not greeting card. So front and back with the thank you information. A 5 by 7 greeting card, in this case, was set up so you could take it and give it to the person having the birthday. So it's a congratulations, happy birthday type card um, that you can customize for the person. Then we have this 7x5 invitation that again has um, a front and back to it. The back is just plain, so we didn't, I didn't show the back to you in this case. Um, and a 6x4 greeting card. And this one has um, a front and back. The back is this brown wood. And on the inside, it's this purple background on one side, and then you have the thank you information here. Now, the other fun part of this one are address labels. Okay, so we have two styles of address labels here. We have your standard one with the return address, so when you're sending out your invitation, you have it. But we also have this fun um, one that you can use for candy wraps, so those large Hershey Nugget candies. They're the ones that um, look like little treasure boxes. These little address labels wrap around them perfectly. So she's adapted it so that it has the name and the year, 
um, on there, and so that makes a really fun uh, gift to give out to your people that come to this milestone birthday. Now, you can do this for 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever age you want. I mean, it could be for 32 if you want to. It doesn't have to be a milestone, but just to show you, you can adjust it for um, a birthday. Next up, this is Romantic Blush Wedding by Roxanne. It's very soft and elegant and so beautiful. Um, and I took the challenge to make this into a graduation set. Okay, so you'll see here that we have um, a book and we also have an invitation. I've listed out the template numbers for these. So let me show you how I adapted this for graduation. You'll see here's that same invitation. It's a five by seven in invitation front and back. The back just has a simple design and the front has the information on it. Now, I went with a college at, um, graduation, but it could easily be for a high school graduation. Um, I also took the photo and made it sepia because I wanted it to kind of blend in with the goldish brown color that is on that um, flourish and the year behind it. Um, and in case you're wondering, these colors, all three of them, the coral, the pink, and the, I think it's called coffee, iced coffee, are all um, Pantone spring colors. So if you're looking for trendy colors, go search for Pantone spring colors. It gives you a beautiful color palette you can work with. Okay, so we have here, again, invitation and then address labels. Nothing fancy, just something simple. Um, you could easily create a book if you want to. Uh, this particular ensemble had minimal items in it um, and maybe by the time I get this template done I'll actually have the book done too so watch for that as well. Now the last one we're going to reimagine is The Happily Ever After by Cassie. This is a 12 by 12 story but can I uh, step this one out just a little bit more because I wanted to see you to see how easy it is to adjust every single item on there. This one I went with a 16th birthday for a girl um, you could do it for any other occasion, but this is a 12 by 12 storybook. So I took this design and I adjusted it using a new collection that we have coming out in May called Hello Grow or Hello Growth. Okay, so you'll see that in all those same spots, I consistently use the same thing. So let me go back and show you now that you've seen this cover. We have the pink polka dots, we have some triangles, photos. So if I go back and look at the cover and the back and that first page, you can see how easy it is to adjust these. Okay, so all I did was, because they're locked, drag and drop the different items in, adjust it so that it fit with a 16-year-old girl. Um, I also went a little bit further and created this fun two-page spread uh, to showcase her, uh, her as well as her friends. Um, so very easy to adjust this book. Next up is the 4x6 invitation. So this one has a front and a back. So again, look at all the details that are included here. And then here's how you can adjust it to a 16th birthday. So again, those bright, fun colors, things that a 16-year-old would probably like. It's very easy to adjust these. And then I took an address label that was part of uh, this set and, and actually um, stole one from another one, a chalkboard wedding set, and made these cute candy wrappers, again for the Hershey Nugget candies, with um, her name on it, the 16, and the sweet. So pulled pieces that I'd used on other pages and other items and put them into here. So that should give you some ideas of things we can do. And before we go on, I want to give out some more points to those people that have joined us for tonight. So 25 points are going to go to Natalie Redder, R-E-D-E-R, -E -E Natalie. You're gonna get 25 um, Heritage Makers publishing points. And so I'm uh, glad you showed up so that we could share this stuff with you. So trying it in studio, we're gonna turn it over to Brooke because Brooke is going to share how easy it is to update these wedding templates for your own wedding as well as for the um, these other occasions. So Brooke, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right, I'm trying to get it to show my screen. Let me see if I can oops, change the presenter to you.
Anybody see anything? Let's see, did I give it to you or did I give oh, it to I someone else? I think you else? took it. Let's try again. Show my screen. Okay. I can see your screen. Can everyone else see her screen? I think if you can see it, then okay. we're good. Okay. Looks like we're good so, to go. I just wanted to show kind of a step-by-step -step of how I changed up one of these templates in these fun sets. So it's really easy. Let's go into the template gallery really quick. Let me get all of these go-to meeting windows out of my way. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So we're going to go into the template gallery. And I just wanted to kind of reiterate a little bit of what Stacy said. There are so many templates in here. It, so many, it's not even funny. I mean, look up here, and there, there's over 13,000 templates in our template gallery. Huge resource to be able to take advantage of. So scroll down in here sometime, and the newest ones are at the top, but you can always go into any of these categories. So I just clicked on template gallery from any page, and it pops up these categories. There will be upcoming holidays and things, and then there will be these kind of all around everyday categories. So like wedding that we were talking about. So if I click wedding, anything that's been tagged wedding, and I think this might be missing a few of the newer ones, but you can see there's almost a thousand wedding templates alone. So you can scroll down in here and there are all kinds of fun sets that you can play around with and completely change up. All kinds of fun layouts and they don't have to be used for wedding templates. Any of these would make great so let's see, there is, there are these fun storybooks that would make really fun any kind of yearbook or special event of any kind. Just all kinds of layouts that are great to use for anything. So start from scratch or start from a template and just play around one of these days. So I wanted to show you, this is from the Wreath of Love collection by Roxanne that Stacey showed. But I wanted to show you guys how I changed it up because it's really, really quite simple. So this one it has one picture. So I just grabbed one of these pictures. And if you guys didn't catch that, oops. Okay, I'm going to turn off the design guide. It's really helpful when you're getting to know the product that you're using to read these. But once you know what it's talking about, it's really easy to just toggle those off with this design guide button. And then I just hit this to zoom the screen to fit what I can see. So obviously I just clicked this and it's got a pink border which means it's locked and then this drop photo here to swap box so I can just drag in any photo I've got and drop it right in this box and it swaps it out. And then I pulled this pretty purple from her shirt. I didn't want to have to try and find it again so I have my purple here. But I pulled this pretty pretty purple out of her shirt and then I changed my mind and decided to use this picture, but I still loved this purple. So all I'm going to do, and I think first, so this swapped in right in the middle, but it's kind of a little close on her head up here. So I'm going to click Adjust in the toolbox and slide it down a little bit, just because I want her face a little more centered. So then I've got the picture where I want it. That was pretty simple. And then I'm going to click on these laurel wreaths, and it's two pieces. You can see they've just got this pink fill color here. So I'm in the Effects tab of the toolbox, and I'm just going to click this little triangle, which will give me my ink dropper. And you can select any color you want, even down here in your photos or in here. Anywhere you want on the screen, it'll pull from. So I'm just going to grab this pretty purple. And now I can get rid of this. And then I just do the same thing with the other laurel leaf. Let's go ahead and close this down. More space. So again, I'm going to do zoom to fit. And it just pops it larger so I can see in better detail. So then these pink stripes right here are just this single box with a border. So I'm going to come over here to the border. And again, just get my little ink dropper and pull it right out of these leaves. So same thing with this text here and I'm just the same things that have the pink on them I'm just turning to purple just to start out with then so this I did for a birthday and you could do it for anything but I loved the idea of just typing in just changing that monogram 
into a number. So it could be anything. I mean, it could be it could be a 100th birthday. Notice the the box isn't quite big enough for three numbers, but it's easy to just add the space. I want to stick with if you guys ever see this bit of an issue that it's giving me, so notice if I double click, it's deselecting the box. Sometimes if there are other items layered on top of a text box, it'll give you that little bit of hassle. So if you just bring it to the front, then you won't have any more problems. So just a little tip there. Okay, I'm going to make this a little smaller again and make sure it's centered where I want it. And then Okay, and then I'm going to take this text and we're going to say her name is Lucille May, because that fits nicely. And since she's 70, that would make it that she was born in 1946. So I liked the, the little bit of a fun play saying that established in 1946 because that was when she was born. I thought it was a fun use of what the template gave us. And then if we change this to celebrate, and we can change this text to whatever we want. Let's do, I'm going to make sure my t caps lock is on so that I have the nice capital letters. It gives it a nice look. Let's say, whoop, there. Celebrate a golden birthday. And I'm going to unlock this. I think I want to move it up just a little bit. I don't need that big of a text box anymore, so I can get it out of the way a little bit. And then this and is a text box. And then there's a circle here. So if I just unlock those, I can delete them right off the page. I'm going to unlock this and move it up a little bit and have it be her name. So let's say Lucille... Oops. I don't remember what name I used in the template. We'll go with it. And then I wanted to make the name stick out a little more, so I took the color of the text here and just made it white. And it just gives it a bit of a clean look. And then none of this really says what the invitation is for, so I'm going to add in a little text here. And I just double clicked in the text box. I made it a little taller to move the text up so that I could add something in here. And we'll just say, come celebrate with us. I mean, you could change that to say whatever you'd like. And then I've still got my text box here, or my, my color here. I'm going to take that and paste it onto the back here just so I can grab the same purple for the back. And then really that's all there is to it. You could add text, you could take away text, you could take off this picture here and put on a few different pictures, whatever you'd like. The nice thing about our templates is they're pre-designed, but they're not set in stone. You can change up any template to suit your needs, which I love. Someone else has already done the work, but if you want to change it up to give it a different meaning, give it a different theme, you can. And it's quite simple to do. So, now I wanted to show you guys one from the little baby collection that I did. And I think, I, I love how this is turning out. I might make a little girl set too. I know that the wedding set for this one is pink and green, but I'm thinking maybe like a little purple and yellow little girl set or something. I don't know. So again, I'm going to turn off this design. Just toggle it off so I have a little bit more space. I've already read those. I know what they're saying, but if you haven't read them yet, please take the time to. It gives great tips and great insight into the way that the page is laid out and what you should know about the product. But so I'm just going to toggle it off. Now I'm going to come down to my pictures. I have a lot of photos <laughs> because I've been working with Heritage Makers a long time. Okay, and I'm just going to pick one of these really cute little baby boy pictures. I think I'm going to adjust this one just a tiny bit and slide him over so he's not quite so off-center. And remember, you can adjust the scale of your photo. I could zoom it in 
and make him closer like that. You can adjust it around however that you would need to make the picture work. Um, you can even like I said, you could take this picture off and put a couple of different pictures filling the space if you want to use more pictures. Um, just make it work for you. I still want to keep this thank you text and I want it white. I'm going to zoom him back out a little bit. Um, you could easily change the color of that thank you text. This is an embellishment. It's not a text box, so I can't double click on it. But if you right click on it, you can oops, if I click on the right spot. You can open the collection that it's from. And these are actually word arts. And there are several in the same and similar fonts. So for example, I could do here we go. I could change it to be this cute hello on there, kind of as a cute little baby announcement. Or I could do happy birthday. There's anything that you could put on here. And you could even keep the same font. And these, because they are uh, embellishments, you can just give them a fill color of anything that you'd like to make them stand out. So, I like the white, I like the nice clean look that it gives. Now, these papers that Anna used for this collection, I love these fun polka dots. So I just right-clicked Open Collection again, and she's got a selection of polka dot papers and even some solids or colors with polka dots and some stripes all in the same coordinating colors. So I want to pull from this pretty blue here. So you'll see that these stripes just have a green fill color on them. I'm going to instead make them blue. And then I'm going to go to the back and she's got these polka dots here. I'm going to grab the blue polka dot paper and just swap it out. So I just clicked it. It's pink, which means it's locked. And then drag it up and drop it here in this drop to swap box. Now, if you're pulling something up and for some reason that box doesn't appear, while you've still got your item selected, just drag off to the side and it should come up. That happens from time to time, so don't be alarmed. Just pull over to the side and then drop it in. And then this is the top inside of the card. And this, I think I'm going to do the green polka dots, which I believe are these ones. So you'll notice, to make the polka dots a little farther away, she tiled them. So there's four papers here. So I do need to swap out all four. And to get to a couple of the other ones, I'm going to have to zoom out just a little bit. But that way... That way I can swap all of these out, and then I've got green polka dots. And then the same thing here on the bottom of the inside of the card. And these polka dots are cute because they're not overly powerful. You can still write on top of them. You can write your little thank you note on the inside, but it's still got a fun pattern to it. So if I save that, it'll update here in the thumbnails. And then these adorable little banners. They are not this one. These are these are both from collections by Anna, and I love them. I love her nice, clean, plain colored designs. So I'm just going to open the collection and scroll across. And there are a couple of different ones. Whoops. In different colors. And I'm going to take this cute green one. So. You'll notice this one is, I'm going to copy and paste so you can see. So it's cropped in nice and close. If I remove the crop, you'll see it's this pink one here. But it's just pulled in to only see one part of the banner. So I'm going to do the same thing with this green one. I'm going to show you guys how I did it. So I'm going to make it about the same size. And then I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to use that pink one as a guide here. So I get it straight. We're almost there. Let's close this. Okay, you see how my pink line is almost straight down there. There we go. Okay. And they're just a tiny bit smaller. 
I just want to make them as close to the same as possible. Okay. So, then all I'm going to do is hit crop. And this is a great trick if you find anything in the art collections that you want to use but you maybe don't want to use the entire thing of. I've seen people take little paperclip art pieces and crop off part of it so that it looks like it's sitting behind the the paper that you're using and it just it gives a fun effect. So I'm going to make sure this is as straight as possible because I don't want this darker green part showing. I just want the light green. And then I click out of it or if you're in there you can click done. And then I just want to put it here and I want to send it backwards in the layering so that it jumps behind the pink one so that then I can just grab this pink one, unlock it, and delete. So then I've still got this text exactly where I want it, but now it's on the green banner. So it's kind of a complicated way of doing it, but it, I love the cute little banner behind the picture. And let's say, love the Hanson. We'll say it's from the entire family. And we'll put in this adorable little new family picture. So you'll see how it's cutting off a bit here because this is a round hole, but it's an oblong picture. So again, while it's locked, I'm just going to hit adjust and slide it across. And you want to make sure, it's kind of hard to see with this picture, so let's show you with another one. Um, you want to make sure that your picture doesn't go inside of the crop area. Sometimes I find that it helps to up the scale just a tiny bit to give yourself that extra space above and below so that you don't accidentally crop it off. So I'm just going to take this family picture just and slide it over a little bit. I think I'm going to zoom it in just a bit because I really want to see the family. And then just sit it right where I want it. Easy as that. So it's really easy to just change up anything that you want in a template to make it what you want. So same thing here, if I decided that I want one of these pictures to be the top inside of the card, I can do that. That is the most incredible part about Heritage Makers and all of these templates. You can make them work for you. So if I want a picture there, now I will have a picture on the top and side of the card. If I change my mind, all I do is grab it, delete it, and I'm back to the polka dots. So make the templates work for you. Find something that you love and make it yours. You don't have to start from scratch if you don't find a template that is exactly what you want. You can pick one that has a layout that you like or even colors that you like and just change it to what you want. If there's a wedding one that you absolutely love everything about it except for the fact that it says wedding, change it to say birthday. Keep the, pla the papers, the embellishments, just swap out pictures and say happy birthday. Just make it whatever you need. So I just wanted to say that and then if anyone has any questions um, we ha still have a little bit of time so if you have questions type them in the question box and we can show you those in studio while we've got this extra time. Stacy, is there anything else that we need to show right now? So far we have no questions so you're doing great. <laughs> you guys are getting a, a sneak preview at some things I've been working on. I've been having fun with the new board books and I'm still working on what to do with the inside pages, but isn't this adorable for a board book? I've been having fun. And maybe some cute thought notepads. Anyway, just because my, my screen was up. So if we have any questions, if not, I guess we give away some more points, eh, Stacy? <laughs> Yep, we can definitely give away some more points. So, we're going to give away points now to Diane Cobalt. Diane Cobalt, you get 25 points for showing up for class tonight.
Okay, Brooke is done, so I am going to take back the screen. Let me take it back, back to me, show my screen, let me get, wow, you just saw my messy desktop. Okay, we want to show you a little bit of a sneak peek of what's coming to studio soon, which actually is uh, not much a sneak peek since this is going to launch on May 1st, but we have some fun collections. This first one, I'm calling it Manly Art. It's called the Gentleman Collection. And yes, it can be used for men, but just like most collections, you can use it for anything you want. But there are some pieces in here that just really really spoke to me. Like these numbers, it, those are so cool, the wood look, but I love the fact that they're kind of um, off the the circle. They're not so specific to show you the whole number. We also have these cute flare buttons. Um, there's a couple of them. I love this one with the camera. And this hat looks kind of like a paper clip. It's actually not. It's just an image. But I just thought it was so clever and so fun. There are some additional wood pieces, like this one that says, He's All That. And then there are some kind of handwritten titles, like this one that says, My Guy. I can't remember the other ones that were in this collection. And then there's a whole bunch of little sayings like this one, I'm, I'm Nuts About You. You'll see there's lots of different papers in here, and they are in more of the manly color sets, like some reds and oranges, greens, blacks, grays. But again, you could easily use these for any occasion. They don't have to be just for the men. But hey, we do have Father's Day coming up, so it's a great time to use those. You will find some things like flowers and accordion um, circles and things like that to kind of uh, use for some of your more, less manly projects if you want. But this is a basic collection, so watch from the gentleman collection coming out May 1st. Then I showed you a little bit of this. It's called Hello Growth. It will be a premiere collection. So this is what I use for that 16th girl's birthday uh, party things. And it is for spring. But oh my goodness, there's so many things in here that have nothing to do with spring. There are little phrases like saying all grown up. There's some that say spring. There's this one that says sweet that I used on um, my project and this pink heart, this bicycle. Oh my gosh, is that not the cutest thing ever? And I've told you before, I have a thing about ampersands and I love this ampersand. This comes with two alphabets. One of them is kind of this smoochy black thing. It looks like it's been stamped and the other one looks more like it's made out of wire. Um, so I've showed you both of those pieces from both of them and and letters are fun but I'm so into you know the other things there are some fun paper clips like this arrow paper clip and there's another one that's just a regular pointed pair paper clip there are lots of flowers this is just one example if you look here you'll see there's some a green one there's these little pink ones they're just the five uh, Petal ones, there's some fancier ones with buttons, all sorts of things. Um, there are lots of journaling cards like this guy that has this cute little uh, speech bubble. Um, I showed you one of them that has um, a heart speech bubble that was pink on the layout. And there's a bunch of frames that have these cut out words along the bottom and I pushed it down here on the blue so you could see the little arrows and the word amazing and then you can put your photo inside of here and I think there's about eight of those that have different words beneath them. Uh, you'll see in here there are ribbons and eyelets. There are um, these little circles that say B, best, P, perfect. And so I think you're really going to love this. There are also some really clever papers, and this was one of my favorites. I made it huge so you could see the detail on it. It's all these triangles that are different colors, so it lets you kind of pull out the colors that you want to focus on. So if pink is your thing, great. But you could also do yellow or green or the teal. So it gives you a lot of flexibility on things that you can do for um, using this collection. So this is a premiere, Hello Growth, and this will be available May 1st as well. We have some additional collections, um, and I'm going to give you a little sneak about the fact that we are adding all the logos for the Longevity brands um, as a collection in the basics. So those of you who are looking to create business things like business cards or notepads, 
um, things you can use to build your business. We will have those logos available and we're going to start working on some templates for some of those business tools as well. Okay, that takes to the end. We still are not showing any questions. Anyone have any last minute questions that you want to ask about the topics we've covered tonight? I hope that you've seen how flexible these templates are and that you can take any theme, any template and create it into what you want it to be. It's the great thing about uh, templates. You don't have to worry about filling a kit start from scratch and be creative. You can do whatever your little heart desires. Okay, our next class, May 19th at 7 p.m. This is going to be a Studio 101. We're going to go through easy projects, projects you can do to build your confidence and also use as gifts. We have lots of gift-giving things coming up. Um, this will be after Mother's Day, so we can't really use it for that, but we have graduations and teacher appreciation gifts, um, Father's Day, there are weddings, and there's always birthdays. So we want to show you some of the fun things you can do that don't take a lot of time, and if you're a little concerned about using Studio, this is going to be a great way to get you started. So please spread the word to all your friends that said, oh, I just feel overwhelmed when I get in the studio. This is going to be a class they're going to love doing because we're going to show you just how easy it is to get in there, make some projects you're going to love, and um, you know, get you started on that road to using Studio. Okay, we're going to call it a wrap. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you on May 19th, if not before then. Um, have a wonderful evening. And remember, use Studio however fits your needs. And don't stress about starting from scratch. Use those templates and get creative with those. Have a great night. Thanks. Bye.